The winners of the 2015 Hippocrates Prize for Poetry and Medicine were announced by the judges in London on the 22nd of May. In this video, you can hear Judge Femi Oyabuda introducing the NHS awards. You can also hear the NHS winners reading their prize-winning poems. So I have a lot of admiration, incredible kind of respect for people who are in the healthcare professions who are able to do something different and to do to a high, a high level. I think that um, I, was, I, I, I approached the idea of being a judge with incredible trepidation because I, I thought, how, how could three of us actually agree on what was a good point? I aided and abetted by, uh, by Donald and Wendy. I think the three of us, we, 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 you know, we spent some time, but it wasn't, there was no blood, there was no blood left on the floor. <laughs> I always think of a, of a poem, I always think of, uh, of uh, the kind of underlying principles and structures of a, of a haiku as the, as the basis um, of, of what poetry is all about. So if you, if you think of a, a haiku, like there are three aspects to it, um, that it's got, to have a, it's got to have a time, it's got to have a place, and it's got to have an image. And, uh, and of course, invented by the Japanese. And the time, uh, it always has to have a time signature. So it has to say something like uh, 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 cherry blossoms. And that event is happening in May. And it's got to have a place that is recognizable. So it might say something like cherry blossoms, three peaks, particular place. And then the idea that you have to have an image, a memorable image. So it might be that. You're, you've got cherry blossoms, you've got the three peaks, and then you've got a, a crane that's very still, and then it flaps its wings. And, and the purpose of telling you that, of course, is that the whole idea of the haiku is that you've gone for a walk, and that you then spot something which you want to tell somebody else about. And because you're not a painter, you can't paint it. But if you handle words, you can use those form of words to tie down. And it's a way of telling somebody else about it. And, and these poems, the, the energist category, they're absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. So they talk about diagnosis, they talk about investigations, they talk about events which have happened to relatives, uh, they talk about what it feels like inside themselves, in particular a set of circumstances. And, and I, I, I know that they're not haikus, of course, but what I'm trying to say is they, what they're doing is they're taking us by the hand and they're walking us through what happens in hospitals. And uh, it's an incredible privilege to get other people to do that for us because, because they slow the process down for us. And, and it's a gift to be able to do that, to be able to use a form of words, to use a pacing for it and to use the words that have a kind of material, wonderful kind of sound to them so that we can see something which they want us to see. Um, and, uh, and, and then of course for those of us who work in that setting, because we work in that setting, we get deadened to the setting. So when you have somebody else who does the work for you, <coughs> who slows the process down and they refresh the setting for you so that they make you more alive, and that's the wonder, that's the beauty of poetry, that's the beauty of literature, but specifically of poetry because it's very economic and, and it uses the magnificence of the materiality of the words to make, have an impact, to have a kind of influence upon us. So we've got uh, two winners for the third prize. And, uh, and the first is Rena Warwick from Thames and Miss, Mrs. Noon. Mrs. Noon. She is all talk. Layers of cigarette smoke, her filthy coat, her thick Irish accent muffle her words. I tune in. It hurts, she says. I hurt. I... Her stream of noise goes on and on like an echo. She says, I might as well be dead. I'm on my own now. Everyone else is dead. The carer comes, skips the evenings, won't talk. It's always the same, every day an echo of the last. I say, first, let's get you out of that coat. I think of the patients waiting. I don't want her to feel hurt. 
I must listen, not hurry. I must let her have her words. All we have in this room are words to get her onto the couch so we can help her, deaden the pain, her knees, her hips, the places that hurt. But Mrs. Loon beats us back with her talk of Ireland, the old days. She hangs on to her stinking coat, holds it to herself like armour, giving us only its echo. I know in my own life there is no space for any echo. Colleagues, husband, home, I am surrounded by words. So I coax her, attempt to liberate her coat. My fingers sink into the moth-eaten fur. Its deadness lingers. Her frown deepens, but her talk continues. That last doctor, like razors, hurt. She looks at me. Is that needle going to hurt? Her eyes with their sagging lower lids have an echo behind them, which says more than all her talk. I'll do my best, I say, but my words seem inadequate to comfort this woman with her long dead husband, her handbag of treasures and her pernicious coat. If only we could get her to lie down, lose the coat. The clock creeps on, but we are halted. Each wasted minute hurts. The assistant and I share a glance, swallow up the dead time. She won't move, this garrulous, pungent echo of a woman, though she must know that our words and our time are metered despite all our talk. Then the coat gives way, her mouth slackens, all echoes end as her body is revealed in all its hurt. Her words stop, the air between us is dead, without talk. Join third, Carol Bromley from Stockton on Harry for the first time. <laughs> on hearing for the first time. <clears throat> it sounds very, very hard, and she sobs for the joy of it, for the reds and blues of it, the shock, the hullabaloo, the kerfuffle, the storm drang, the sudden ice cream in a shake, the sherbet firework burst. It's just amazing, she cries, her face in her hands. I'm going to say the months of the year, and she hears them shaking. January, February, March. April overwhelms her. It's like never having seen a bird, or the sea, or the stars, never tasting an orange. Like living all your life in a cave and coming out into the light, the sun on your face. Afterwards, she walks by the time, dare to go alone for fear the bird song, the traffic, the ship's hooter will be too much. They are not. It's like falling in love. And the second prize to Anne Lillian Jade from Bangor, night visit. Night visit. 4 a.m. Hunting for a dairy farm. Somewhere up there where the windmills scrape the sky, red kite hover. Headlights scatter, lose themselves. Fog rolls down the windscreen, trees lurch from the shadows. Nothing stirs. Only a dog barking at a fox and ghosts. Signs summon me to unreadable villages. Gaps in the hedge, inch by sheep whispering at stubs of grass, crooked with cold. Pale light filters around the edges of blinds, sidles nervously through an open door. A work-hardened hand clutches mine. The humble path. It's really bad this time. And the, the first prize, the winner of the editor's category this year is Kate Comston from View, lovely young consultant, Charles, my husband. Uh, you may need to know that DLB is an abbreviation for Dementia with Louis Bodies. Lovely young consultant, Charms, my husband. Look here and here, she breathes. I note her intentness as the three of us pour over her strange map. I see his graying face light at her nearness, 
how he floats in her interest in him. I could be half in love with her myself, lap at her kindness greedily, but brace myself to hear her verdict. Poet in an alien tongue and territory, she rhapsodizes about gaps where gaps ought not to be. We trace low dopamine uptake. She strokes her throat, addressing me. Dementia, DLB. Given the other signs, the overlap of dream and real, the slowing pace, visual hallucinations, remote expression, this scan wraps up my diagnosis. Stops and holds his hand, devotes herself to him. Together we will deal with this thing, yes? Embraced by her concern, he throws aside encroaching night, flings his windows wide. The trap door of my heart slams shut. The Hippocrates Prize is an annual award with a deadline of the 31st of January. The award is for an unpublished poem in English on a medical theme with up to 50 lines of text. There is an Open International Award first prize £5,000, an NHS award also first prize £5,000 and an International Young Poet category with a prize of £500. You can find out more about the Hippocrates Prize and order an anthology of previous winning and commended poems through our website Hippocrates-poetry.org